What's going on YouTube? Magnus here, back with another video for you guys. Today we're going to do something a little different. It's been chaos around here for a couple of months and I've been slacking. I'll explain that in another video. But today we're going to do a pattern from McEwen Handcraft. He said that I could take his pattern and make a video out of it. It's a cool little dice box, Dungeons and Dragons style chest. You can pick up this pattern on his website, link in the description down below, or on my Patreon for this month only. Link in the description down below, or I'll put a link here, whatever. This video is brought to you by Lonsdale Leather. Be sure to check out the links in the description down below for all sorts of tools, supplies, and of course, leather. The fact that this pattern is just one piece of leather that you cut out is pretty awesome. We've taped it together. I'm using some five to six ounce Vegetan here because I want to tool it and dye it. Right here, I am just checking to make sure that the swing clasp used in the creation of this pattern is the same as the swing clasp I had before I punched the holes, and it was. So I punched the holes. I'm just using a hole punch here because it's the easiest way to do that rounded corner. That rounded corner on the pattern says it's there so you don't tear at those points, which is a good idea. Now we're going to start drawing the lines for our V-gouge. We're going to gouge out the lines and that'll enable our chest to bend and fold together. The only thing I really added to this pattern is where the tabs are that stitch the sides together. It just says to skive them down. I skived them and I also added a V-gouge line. I found that a lot easier. Um, some people may want to just V-gouge it and not skive it, but I did the skiving as well. These little parts here are what I'm talking about. Right here I'm just marking the first and last hole for the stitching. My idea was that I was going to use my multi-prong punch to punch along, but then I just decided later to just do a single punch and do all the holes exactly where they're marked on the pattern. If you're going to make these your own, you're going to want to adjust the holes a little bit just based on your multi-punch um, because it'll be easier in the long run. Like most of my projects, I like to do some leather carving on them. I drew this not work pattern specifically for this dice chest and you can pick this up on my patreon as well i do tons of videos with leather carving in them some more detailed than this one generally you're wetting your vegetable tanned leather you're tracing it on with tracing film cutting it with this swivel knife that i have here and then beveling all your edges with various stamping tools and backgrounding tools which are, I guess they're still stamping tools, but they do different things. In the description of this video, there are multiple options for tools. You can hit up Lonsdale Leather. They've got a ton of great tools that you can use, but they don't have a lot of carving tools. So I usually supply links for carving tools, as well as a link to my website where there's other tool options. As you're carving, you're going to have to wet your piece a bunch. Just depends on how much carving you're doing. Now I'm doing some beveling. This is going to add depth to your piece and make it look more three-dimensional.
I figured I would try something a little different this time, which was dyeing it a super light brown before I did my antiquing process to help make the carving pop. But that light brown, after you spray it with a resist and then finally put your antique on it, it just darkened a little too much for me. So you'll see what I mean later here. Now I'm just using some beeswax to finish off the edges. This will burnish them up, make them nice and smooth. You can hand burnish it like I'm doing here, or you can say screw that noise and you could purchase something like this here, which is a lot faster. Now this worked out just fine, but usually I would do this burnishing after I antique my piece. Um, that's because the beeswax or whatever you're using to do your burnishing is going to interfere with your resist and possibly your stain that you're putting on top. I don't know why I did it backwards and it, it worked out fine, but it's not what I would usually do and I'm just giving you guys a heads up. The spray gun that I have here is not specifically a special type of spray gun. It's just something you find at the hardware store. The brand is not something I am desperately attached to. It's just one of the ones I found, so I used it. I put on two coats of acrylic resiline, and that puts a resist on my piece so I can rub this stain in here, and it'll just leave the stain in all the cracks and then wipe away on the top. But because of how dark this piece is, it really doesn't pop like I wanted it to, so it was kind of a big waste of time. You can see it there, it is darker, but I decide to paint it. I probably would end up painting it anyways, but the painting will make it pop really nicely. I have other videos where that antique process looks way better because I haven't darkened the leather so much that it doesn't contrast enough. Now I just put on one more little coat of resiline to seal it and we're just going to rivet on the top and bottom of our swing clasp before we stitch together our four corners. When I got home to edit this footage I realized that almost all of the stitching was the back of my head. But let's not overthink things. It's just a running stitch. I start at the bottom, work my way up to the top, and go all the way back down to the bottom, then I tie it off. That's it. It's not going to come apart. It's not a baseball. You don't have to worry about it. Just, uh, stitch it together. There's nothing special going on here. You know, all too often people put way too much effort into making a giant convoluted pattern that nobody really has any interest in building. Or they buy it and it sits off to the side and they never get around to building it. This is a beautiful, simple little pattern that you have lots of room to add tooling to. You can change the closure on it. Really straightforward. You can bang them out without having to worry too much about your time. Uh, I love this pattern. I honestly, I kind of wish that I had come up with it myself. And uh, maybe eventually I'll do one, but it won't be for a while. So if you want to pick it up, McEwen Handcraft. Link in the description down below. I'll put a link right here. If you don't feel like clicking on down there, you can click up here. Or you can pick it up for this month only on my Patreon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you did. Hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my content. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.